one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to a rather unexpected video. This time of the year, in the UK, it's quite hard to plan automotive content because of the weather. It's always raining or it's windy or there's some storm coming through. Don't make unnecessary journeys. Which means that car owners, car collectors, car dealerships are often a bit wary about letting you take their cars out for a drive when the weather's fairly crap. Fair enough, I get that, that that's totally fine. It means in the last four weeks, I think I've had three different video shoots cancelled, all fairly last minute. Happened again this week. So I was sitting around going, oh God, what am I gonna, what am I gonna film for a video on Sunday when the Octane Collection got in touch? Said, hi Sam, we know you're a fan of a modern classic. Would you like to come and drive one of the, the greatest modern classics made? The car in question is of course, the Porsche Carrera GT. Now, not only have I not driven a Carrera GT before, but recently, I'm talking about the last 12 months or so, values of Carrera GTs have been going through the roof. So it's a very interesting time to have a go in one. So yeah, right now, I'm on my way in the RS6, down to the Octane Collection, to drive a Carrera GT. It's a good day. I've got to be honest, I thought I knew what to expect coming down here today, but I didn't. I've been blown away. I've just spent the last 30 or 45 minutes just walking around this place, kind of being amazed by every car in here. I'm so overexcited that I want to stop talking to you and just show you some of these cars, because yeah, they're perfect. Now there is a lot of Porsche loving going on down here, and I'm not going to complain about that because, well, you know, I love Porsche. On the left, we have got a GT3 RS 4 litre, the sort of the ultimate version of the GT3 from the 997.2 era. Uh, this one, very special because it's a paint to sample car, meaning it's got a rare colour. Oh, about 39 paint to sample cars exist of the 500 4 litres ever made. This is a meteor grey. I oh, just, I mean, it's just cool, isn't it? But speaking of cool and potentially even cooler, <gasps> the 2RS. This thing, a proper monster. Obviously, we got the 991.2 generation 2RS as well that people are very overexcited about, but for me, this one's a bit more animalistic, a bit more brutal, a bit more raw, and in this red colour, oh, I think it's fantastic. I have actually experienced one of these before in Dubai. All I can tell you is that it still spins its wheels in fourth gear. <laughs> and then wedged in the middle, you might be like, ah, the least interesting of the three, but you'd be wrong. Yes, this is a GT3 RS, but it's a Manti racing car, which means it's got the uprated 4.2 litre engine. Yes, this is a special 4 litre. That's a 4.2. It's got loads of other, well, sort of trick bits on it to make it super track focused so yeah porsche loving and 997.2 generation loving which uh, it may uh, it used to be my favorite generation maybe it is still my favorite generation uh -huh. i'm getting really porsche nerdy let's move on this is a very cool and rare car the balboni edition gallardo uh, valentino balboni a very famous test and development driver for lamborghini his signature is just there inside the window but that's not what makes this car special two things do firstly the fact it's rear wheel drive which really bucked the trend for Gallardos, most of which were four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. But even cooler than that, this particular car comes with a manual gearbox. I think just sort of one of three right-hand drive Balboni editions that had the manual gearbox. Most other people went with the with the paddle shifters because it was so popular at the time. So yeah, this is a proper little Lamborghini driver's car. Another outrageous Porsche, but also another outrageous Ferrari. Check out this Testarossa in white with the kind of crema interior and then the sort of mono specchio high wing mirror. I mean, that thing, oh, that's just Instagram fodder. That's a million likes right there. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen.
considering my new daily, I obviously can't skip past this. I wouldn't anyway. It's an Audi RS2, obviously developed with Porsche. This one in green. Now I'm hoping to be able to do a feature with an RS2 in the near future, maybe even back down here at Ogden Collection or Fast Classics. Because um, I just think it'd be great to tell that story of basically the great, great grandfather to the car that I've ended up owning and, and seeing one here in green. I'm like, oh, why not now? But this car sold. So, so can't be filming with this. Let's hope that Fast Classics or Octane Collection or one of the brands down here gets another one of these in soon. I can come back and do that piece because I've never driven one of these. Super intrigued. Now, whilst there are tons of other cars here that I should be pointing out and you've probably noticed, I kind of want to move on to the main show. But before we do that, I know the internet would kill me if I didn't point out this. Yes, it's a Koenigsegg. Now, if you listen to my podcast, Behind the Glass, you'll know that I'm not usually that fussed by Koenigseggs. Again, internet, don't hate me. But this one is actually quite interesting. This is a CCXR addition. Um, addition, noting the fact that it's all bare carbon. R, noting the fact that if you put sort of race fuel in it, you get around 1,000 horsepower. But I actually think most interestingly to me, it's the last manual Koenigsegg. I often knock Koenigseggs in general for kind of being, well, cars people buy for... Instagram or YouTube thumbnails. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of hate comments for this, aren't I? But long story short, this is actually a proper Koenigsegg driver's car. A thousand horsepower with a manual gearbox. I mean, that's ridiculous. With a kind of clear carbon fiber body. So I actually think I quite like this thing. But I'm not going to talk much more about it because I don't know much more about it. Let's move on to the main show. There's now a challenge to Dali being brought into the showroom. <laughs> this place is outrageous. I kind of want to give up filming the Carrera GT for a second to go and film the CS. It's black or black, no stripes. It's a stunner, but I'm, I'm here for this. So once the guys have parked the, the Stradali, we'll, we'll chat about the, the Carrera GT. Okay, so yes, now I've stopped fanboying over one of my all-time favorite cars. Let's move on to a car that is a lot of other people's favorite cars. Yes, the Carrera GT. Now, as I mentioned, values of the Carrera GT have been going through the roof recently. For the last 12 months, price of a used Carrera GT in America, Europe, and even here in the UK has, well, doubled, if not tripled, if not quadrupled. About five years ago, you'd probably look to pay around £400,000 for a relatively decent used Carrera GT in the UK. Nowadays, you need to be prepared to pay around a million pounds. Now, we can analyse all the different reasons as to why maybe values of these cars have been going up so much. But I think to kick things off, let's talk about the history, the facts and stats. I'm aware that most of you will know everything you need to know about Carrera GT. It's a very well-documented car. I feel like we should remind ourselves of the story of this thing, and then we can get a little bit philosophical as to why maybe values of them are getting so high. Now, as cool as this thing might look, and whilst it does have some amazing features like, well, yes, that manual gearbox, for me, if I can open the door, by the way, if you ever want to know, the Carrera GT door handle, it's kind of hidden there under the curves of the door, and yeah, you've got to really, really sort of, well, find it. Um, for me, the most interesting part, or the most special part about the Carrera GT, if I can just open up this carbon fibre engine cover is that the engine the v10 engine now you can actually kind of trace the history of this engine all the way back to the early 90s when porsche were developing a v10 engine for the footwork formula one team they ended up sort of shelving that engine and it kind of sat a little bit unloved for a number of years but luckily it came back to life at the end of the 90s when porsche were developing their latest le mans 24 hour endurance car but it got dealt another blow because towards the end of the 90s, the sort of VW Porsche merger was really getting to the swing of things. They decided to make the first Porsche SUV, the Cayenne, and development for that SUV took up so, so many resources and so much money that the Porsche motorsport team took a bit of a hit. They decided to not build an endurance car for the 1999 season, probably because Audi were also competing and maybe VW didn't want Porsche versus Audi at Le Mans. So suddenly you had this kind of incredible motorsport built X Formula One X 
Le Mans engines sitting around at the Porsche factory with nowhere really to be used. So Porsche decided to build a concept car called the Carrera GT, which would use this V10 engine. And they thought if we can get enough interest, enough people saying they'd want to order one, then we can build the car. And they unveiled this concept car at the Paris Motor Show. Now, if you want to hear the story about how they did that, you need to go and check out the Harry's Garage YouTube channel and listen to Harry Metcalf tell the story of how he first heard about, saw, or experienced the concept for the Carrera GT. It's an unbelievable story. And of course, as you would expect, immediately Porsche got a whole load of interest from people saying, I want that car. So they ended up building just under 1,300 units, all with a 5.7 litre V10 engine, putting out around 600 horsepower and mated with, yes, that manual gearbox. Apparently, we have to thank Walter Roll, the famous rally champion and sort of Porsche test and development driver for this car having that six-speed manual. Uh, other members within the team wanted it to have a sort of, uh, well, basically a flappy paddle gearbox because that was the in thing at the time. But yeah, this has got that manual box. And so, when you then consider that it's basically largely a carbon fiber car, so it's exceptionally light, you're starting to understand, I think, why this car is such an attractive proposition. We've got 5.7 litre naturally aspirated V10, 600 horsepower to the rear wheels via a manual gearbox in a very light car with very few driver aids. Oh yes, you can also take the roof off. So there you go. If you were to come up with the ultimate analog Porsche, but also this supercar driving experience, would this not be essentially what you would write down on paper? I think it probably is. Anyway, to truly understand this thing and work out if it's as special as it appears on paper, we've got to go for a drive. So yes, with huge thanks to Octane Collection, that's what's about to happen. This 900,000 pound Carrera GT is about to be driven by me. Oh wow. Well, here we are then, in the driver's seat of a Carrera GT. Right, so let's give this a go, handbrake off, first gear. Uh, I'm gonna give myself plenty of time with traffic and things like that. And apparently all I should do is just very easily come off the clutch, find that binding point, allow the car to roll, and then off the clutch and we're away. Again, we've just, I'm just gonna come out of first gear because there's a lot of traffic on this road suddenly. <laughs> it had been empty, and now suddenly there are cars everywhere. So we'll just wait for this big blue truck to get out of the way and then we'll get going. But yeah, the, the thing which is surprising me the most right now is that this is the exact same steering wheel I had on the 996 40th anniversary that I owned. It's, it's literally identical. So, right, there we go, first gear. Very slow, very slow, trying to be as controlled as possible, wait for us to start crawling. Come on car, crawl, crawl, crawl. Oh, we're moving, there we go, there we go. Oh, he's done it in one! What a pro! <laughs> I actually didn't think that would happen. Uh, right, we are moving in a Carrera GT. Now, I speak about it so often, the fact that modern day supercars are just a void of personality because they're so over-engineered. They're obviously better than all the cars that preceded them and some of them are fantastic, but they don't always give you the same sensation that some of these older cars or older supercars could. The thing is though, you've got to think of the Carrera GT as an older hypercar. When this came out, it was going up against Ferrari Enzo and McLaren SLR and, you know, really special bits of kit. Do you think the Carrera GT does have a, a fairly um, iconic exhaust note? But when you're driving it, you don't actually pick up on it that much, especially when the roof is off. You're getting a lot of, not too much wind noise, but you are getting wind noise you're mainly getting mechanical noise, engine mechanical noise, gearbox noise, a bit of road noise. This is a carbon car, so there's a lot of sort of vibrations going on. And actually, you don't get the symphony of that V10 all that often, which you might think is a shame, but because everything else supersedes it and the mechanical noise is also so exhilarating, you don't really mind. throttle. I mean, we were climbing up the revs, but so the, the and it revs so quickly and freely. Oh my god! Again, the heart's pumping, people. This suddenly feels way more exhilarating than maybe I was even expecting. So this 
car, it's it's nearly 20 years old. But I, I, it feels perfect. It's so peachy. Everything is just wonderful. And it's such a, well, analog driving experience. There we go, the least shocking thing I've said in today's video. But I'm just so connected with everything that's going on. Oh my God. I mean, you could get arrested in this car very easily. Probably also end up in a tree. So I'm just trying to be careful. I sort of mentioned it a second ago, but this car had such a sort of a devilly uh, reputation. But it's kind of been forgotten in recent years. But I remember when I sort of first started seeing through glass, people talked about the Carrera GT in sort of whispered voices. Oh, don't you know, Lewis Hamilton's father crashed one of those? What about Paul Walker? He died! I mean, it really was a scary thing, and maybe that's why it's taken me so long to drive one, because there was genuinely a bit of fear then, and there's still that fear now, but that's what makes a car great. You need just to know that you've got to treat it carefully, you've got to figure it out, you've got to learn it, you've got to appreciate the power. Nowadays, if you step into a, a GT2 RS, there's enough electronics on board that unless you're a real idiot, you're not going to go into a tree. Whilst today, I could. Oh my god, that throttle is so responsive. I literally just want to like the smallest creek in the road. And the rev counter, not even the speedo, the rev counter is being like, oh, what is happening? But are you hearing or not hearing? As I said, that's the lack of exhaust note. It is surprising. I know it's all going on back there. When I stood outside the car filming the flybys, my ears were ringing. But now it's just, you're sort of so honed into the experience and the view in front. Oh my God. Now, to add to the pressure of today's experience, it wasn't enough. Uh, Lucas, who's sitting right next to me, said, if you approach a roundabout, don't come to a standstill. Keep the car rolling. So whenever I see a roundabout, my heart starts racing even faster. Oh my God, people, we're on the move now. What is happening? What? Big carbon brakes, which is good. At the time, they were a relatively new thing. There weren't many production cars out there with carbon brakes. We see them a lot now, but... Yeah, you're, they're reassuringly there. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's very rare that I'm lost for words, but I'm starting to get lost for words. It's just, an, it's such a pure driving experience. It really is. There's just nothing going on apart from you, the throttle, this incredible gearbox. Oh. Okay, so the Audi is about to pull off. We, we, this might be our last hurrah, people, let's see. But. What a hurrah. Maybe my reaction now, maybe this experience hasn't surprised you. It's a Carrera GT. But experiences like this are why values of these cars are starting to go through the roof. Because they're harder and harder to come by. That's just the truth. And if you want to drive, do some proper driving, this is what you want. It doesn't matter how incredible new cars get, there's no real thrill and sensation like the last of the analog cars offer. And this really was the last. It's great to see that people are now, well, finding these cars more and more desirable. The bad news is, for, for you and me, it means chances of actually owning cars like this are becoming further and further away. That's always the way in the world, but yeah, unbelievable. And I didn't die, and I didn't crash the car. <laughs> I'm still recovering from that experience. <laughs> Everything I hoped and wanted it to be. What a ridiculous car. But to summarize, I guess, why I think values of these things are going so insane, apart from the experience I just had, it's because, well, if you look at this car's kind of rivals or, or other truly analog super or hyper cars out there, Enzo Ferrari, F50, McLaren F1, what am I forgetting? Probably lots of things. They're all insanely valuable. And actually, maybe this car has been undervalued for a bit too long, potentially because of its kind of sketchy reputation or 
Maybe because of the Porsche badge. Porsche don't really have a history of making these kind of big hypercar S cars, 959, GT1, Carrera GT, 918. I guess that's really it. Everything else is just a sort of standard road car. Whereas McLaren's F1 story is amazing. Pretty much every Ferrari you can think of is considered to be a valuable investment opportunity. So yeah, this thing I think could potentially have been overlooked. And if everything else is a million pounds plus, two million pounds plus, then surely this has to be as well. It's the way of the world. It's the way of the market. I really, really enjoyed that experience. I have to say once again, a huge thanks to the Octane Collection. I've got to get back down here because some pretty amazing stuff knocking around, isn't there? Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.